Hello, um, this is Mark Chris from Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, speaking today about a uh, Thanksgiving gift that I uh, very uh, happily learned about just a day or two before the holiday, and that is the newest version of the NCCN guidelines. Uh, there were two very, very important uh, additions there, uh, and I'll get to them in just a second. Uh, I'm still high on the uh, How Later paper earlier this year, uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, that showed for the very, very first time there's been a decrease in the mortality of lung cancer. Uh, fantastic news, and even more fantastic is that benefit is across all races and ethnicities, uh, men and women, uh, and, and they specifically state that the reason that this mortality has decreased in lung cancer is because of lung cancer treatment. Uh, which brings me to the new developments in the NCCN guidelines. There are two very, very important additions, and I think the most important one is the addition of osimertinib as a, a postoperative or adjuvant therapy. Uh, there on page NSCL4, it states that for stages 1b to 3a, uh, for EGFR uh, mutant cancers, that osimertinib should be added. Uh, I think that's a very, very important development. Uh, we've talked in earlier uh, discussions on the uh, strength of the data uh, from the uh, randomized trial that showed the benefit of osimertinib over uh, placebo. Clear, clear benefits in disease-free survival across all groups, all stages. Uh, and, and I think the critical issue there is with disease-free survival is the goal here is different. We're not looking simply for life prolongation. We're looking for the possibility of cure. And the only way you can cure someone is to put them on that disease-free survival curve and make sure they stay on that disease-free survival curve. And osimertinib is an important addition to help us do that. Uh, I think also for the first time we have a very uh, tolerable uh, post-operative therapy, one much uh, more tolerable than a cisplatin-based chemotherapy. I think a lot of people were deterred by that. A lot of people couldn't recommend it uh, because of uh, comorbid conditions or the uh, severity of the side effects that are perceived. The other important thing in NS the NSCLC3, uh, also part of the NSC uh, uh, non-small cell lung cancer guidelines, is for the stage 1b the high-risk groups. I urge you to look into the, uh, the fine print there, and clearly when you have tumors that have uh, visceral pleural invasion, uh, that have uh, uh, lymph, uh, invasion of lymphatics or vessels, they are at higher risk. risk. And data has shown that chemotherapy is uh, more beneficial for those patients, those at higher risk. So um, again, and, and those of you that make that tough choice of who should get uh, adjuvant chemo, please pay attention uh, to those pathologic factors that predict high risk and help that benefit risk ratio when we're recommending cisplatin-based chemotherapy. Just a reminder that the data for the osimertinib trial uh, included patients receiving osimertinib after their chemotherapy as well as those that didn't receive it. And I think the standard of care today for a patient that is fit and could receive uh, cisplatin-based chemotherapy is that they should get that followed by three years of osimertinib. Uh, the other important development happened later in the guidelines, and that was the addition of a antibody drug conjugate, uh, TDXD. The official name, and I have to look it up myself, uh, it is FAM. Trastuzumab Deruxtecan NXKI, or I like to call it Trastuzumab Deruxtecan. This antibody drug conjugate uh, has been shown to be extremely effective as a single agent uh, and clearly gives us a new way of treating patients with HER2 mutant disease. I, I think there, there is uh, data also, that uh, patients that have HER2 amplified disease could benefit as well. There's data with TDM1 that uh, Bob Lee has published, uh, and I think that's uh, ultimately we're going to see that the, this drug will be helpful in those patients as well. So, for patients with EGFR mutant cancers that have complete resections, adjuvant osimertinib. Uh, for any patient with uh, a high risk of recurrence, 
visceral pleural invasion, vascular invasion, lymphatic invasion. Think about making sure they all get chemotherapy as well as later stages two and three. Uh, and for people with HER2 mutant cancers, the addition of uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan. Great news. Uh, and I'm hoping that adding the drugs to this uh, adjuvant situation, we can cure more patients and make further improvements on uh, decreasing the mortality of this disease for all patients.